In our home slides.html, I've added the attribute required with a value of true to this heading, the main heading, because we need that as the clickable link in the slide. I'd also like people to complete the body text. So let's make this one also required true. However, we've got this subheading. Now, maybe we don't need to make people add a subheading, but the problem is if they don't add a subheading, if we don't make it required, then you'll get these stray H4 elements just sort of sitting there and empty, and you might not want that to happen. So to solve this issue, we use a perch conditional. We use perch if. This conditional takes an ID which is the same as the ID of the content that you're checking for. So we could say perch if exists equals and the ID is subheading. And then if we go to the end, we can just close this with perch if. So you can see these kind of look a bit like HTML or XML tags that we're using and these are part of the perch template engine. And there are other conditionals too, but we'll just look at if for now. So if we save this, and then we can go back to our site. And here's one of our editing screens. So let's reload this. And we can see here that we've now got the required field against the body. So that's going to need to be filled in. And if we delete the subheading here, and save it. So now we've got an empty subheading. And we go back and you can see here this is moved up because we've now got no empty element in there. So that's a very simple way to ensure that you don't end up with stray markup in your template. A common thing to do would be to use a perch if around the image element because obviously if you've got the image SRC and they don't upload it, you're going to end up with empty image elements in your page. You don't want that. Uh, so use perch if around any markup that you don't want output if someone doesn't complete a field that is optional.